Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about polygons in the coordinate plane. So, uh, let's just review a few of our formulas. Given two points, x1, y1, which is p, and x2, y2, or q, we have the midpoint formula, which is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, and y1 plus y2 over 2. The way I like to remember midpoint formula is think middle of two numbers is the average. I just need to find the average of the x's and the average of the y's, and I've got it. All right, slope formula, we have rise over run, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, when you're rising on a graph, you're going in the y direction. When you're running, you're going in the x direction. So y's go on top, and the x's go on the bottom. And then the distance formula, we have the square root of the difference of our x's, so the distance between the two x's squared, plus the distance between the two y values squared. But remember, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distances. It's the exact same as the distance formula as long as you make that right triangle from one point to the other. All right, so let's look at a couple examples here. The first one is graph and label each triangle, or the triangle here, uh, with the three vertices, and then determine whether the triangle is scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So that's our goal. We're trying to figure out which type of triangle this is by our graph. So we have negative 3, negative 2, which is V. We have positive 3, negative 2, which is W, and we have 0, 3, which is X. So if I connect all these and we look at the graph, you might be able to take kind of an educated guess as to which type of triangle it is, but in order to be absolutely sure what triangle it is, we have to find the lengths of those sides. So remember, scaling means all the sides are different lengths. Isosceles is when only two sides have the same length, and equilateral is when all three sides have the same length. So we need to find the lengths of all the sides. So let's find our lengths and label your work. Always label and organize your work. So we need to find, let's see, xw, we need to find vw, and we need to find xv. All right, so again, the distance formula, it's a little difficult to remember, and I always find it easier to remember the Pythagorean theorem and just make your right triangles. So if I make a triangle from x to w, I'm going three in this direction, and 5 from 3 all the way down to negative 2 in that direction. So xw is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared. So it's kind of a mashup of the Pythagorean theorem and our distance formula. I like it. It's my favorite way to find links on a graph. All right, so we've got 9 plus 25, which is the square root of 34. And we can't simplify 34. If we divide it by 2, we get 17. Can't really do much with that. All right, so let's go uh, VW. Oh, well, VW is horizontal, which is kind of nice. We can just count that one. It goes from negative 3 to positive 3, so that length is 6. All right, so if you notice, I already can count out the equilateral triangle because the square root of 34 is not 6. And if we hadn't found these, we might have looked at the graph and thought it was equilateral. So that's why it's really important to actually find the length algebraically of your sides. All right, and then let's find the lengths of these sides. So from 0 to negative 3 is a length of 3. And then this is 5. So if I look at my graph, I can kind of see already that it's going to be the same as xw. But we want to show our work. So we've got to follow all the way through and find each length. So here I have two sides that are the same length, one side that is different, which makes this an isosceles triangle. All right, so there's our first example. Now this one's gonna get a little more complicated because we have a quadrilateral instead of 
a uh, triangle, and I want to figure out if it's a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, or square. So I have a lot of stuff to think about here. First, let's just start by graphing our points. So we have, if E is at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 3, here's my E, and negative 1, negative 1 is F, and G is at positive 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, oops, not F, that one is G, all right, and then H is at 6, 2, okay, so we have these two sides here, and these two sides here, all right, and now we have to come up with a plan. So think about all the things we learned in the last couple videos about parallelograms and rectangles, rhombuses, squares. Uh, what we want to really figure out is the lengths of the sides and the slopes of the sides to figure out if they're parallel or not. So let's see, we wanna find lengths and slopes of all the sides just to make sure we've got all of our pieces. Now with the slopes, granted parallelograms, rectangle, rhombuses, squares, they all have parallel sides, but only rectangles and squares have perpendicular sides. So for the slopes, I can figure out if they're perpendicular sides to figure out if I have 90 degree angles. And with the lengths, I can figure out if I have congruent sides. So these are kind of the two things we need to be thinking about when going through this. And again, we're going to label and organize all of our work. All right, so let's just start listing here. We have GH, we have HE, and FE, and GF. So all the way around my figure, I want to find the lengths of all of these. Again, I'm going to do my little Pythagorean theorem distance, uh, distance formula mashup here. So if I go all the way across, now this is also why I make sure to put the numbers I use for my points on my graph, because then it's easy for me to look, G goes from 1 to 6, and from G to H. So that's going to be a length of 5, and I don't have to worry about counting. All right, and then this goes from 4 to 2, so that's going to be 2. So finding GH, I have the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared, which is 25 plus 4 which is 29, so square root of 29 for that one. And then we move on to our next side. So EH, I've got from positive two all the way down to negative three, which is a length of five, and from four to six, which is a length of two. Aha, if you notice, that's the same numbers we got for the last side. So HE, we've got two squared plus five squared, which is 4 and 25, which is 29, just like GH. All right, so let's keep going. We always want to find all of our sides. Even if we think we know what we have, we have to show all of our work for all of our sides. So here, from negative 1 to negative 3 is a length of 2. From negative 1, our x value all the way to 4 is a length of 5, sure enough. And then while I'm over here, I might as well just get these guys here. Negative 1 to positive 4 is 5. And from negative 1 to positive 1 is 2. So it looks like all of our sides are going to be congruent. Let's just finish up our work. And you know what? I'm just going to skip. I'm going to show that it's 5 and 2 squared. I'm just going to skip to 29. It's okay. I don't have to repeat all three steps, just the setup and then the length. So if you notice, all sides, all sides are congruent, which means that it's either a rhombus or a, re or a square. So at this point, I know it's either a rhombus or a square. Now I need to find the slopes and figure out if I have perpendicular sides and if it is a square. So let's find the slopes of GH. Let's just go all the way around. GH and HE and FE and GF. All right, so my slopes We've got, now I'm going to use my graph for my slopes. Mind you, if the problem said that we had to use our formulas, we would want to make sure to use our slope formula. But since I have a graph, I can just use that. So if I go from G to H, uh, left to right on our graph, we would go down to, 
So there's my rise is negative 2. And then I'd go over 5. So here's my slope for GH. Now if I go from H to E, but then if you notice, if we actually go from H to E, we're going to go backwards on our graph. We always want to find our slope from left to right when we read our graph. So we want to go from E to H. So from E to H, I would go up 5 and then over 2. So this is going to be up 5 over 2. If you notice, those two sides have opposite reciprocal slopes, which means they're perpendicular, which is really cool. All right, let's do FE. So I would go down 2 over 5. If we notice, using my little triangles that I made for my length, I can kind of use those again for my slopes, which is nice. And then GH, or sorry, GF, I go from F to G, because right to left, up 5 over 2. All right, so if you look, so angles or sides are perpendicular, so 90 degree angles, or we should actually say four right angles to be exact, because we have all the sides are perpendiculars, perpendicular to the ones next to them, four right angles. And we know that if all four sides are congruent and all four right angles, we have a square. So we have figured out what type of quadrilateral we have. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.